Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. Today we have some I don't work your lady stories and our first story of the day is by Tamira is redditing. Hi from Texas. Private business can still enforce mask policies even without a state mandate. Here's how that's going. I'm a waitress. Our restaurant strictly requires masks while indoors if your meal or beverage hasn't been served and after it's been bussed. The mask mandate honestly wasn't that helpful in corralling unruly customers because they'd either argue that the mandate was not a law so they wouldn't follow it, was unconstitutional so they wouldn't follow it, or was irrelevant because they'd eventually be taking their mask off when their food was served so they wouldn't follow it. But while the presence of a mandate didn't help much, the lack of a mandate has made things way, way worse. People who previously wore a mask now don't believe it's necessary for their health or that we have a right to set mask wearing as a store policy. But what they don't understand and what I'll reiterate for you now, private businesses can have any dress code they want. Ever go to a fancy restaurant that requires suit jackets for men? Or a grocery store that requires shoes? Yeah, where were the freedom fighters then? Anyways, regardless of your opinion on masks, no need to argue it to me, in the comments or as a customer, because the owner makes those calls. My job is to enforce his decisions, whether that be all customers have to wear face masks covering mouth and nose, or if it were all customers have to wear sleeveless denim vests, I'd have to enforce it if he wanted it so. That's literally part of my job. Our in-house mask mandate at the restaurant remains firmly in place and I spend my entire shift telling people to comply or leave. Then telling them again, then a third time, then getting our larger, more physically intimidating line cook to tell them. By the end of the shift, I was a master at putting my hand up authoritatively and saying, Sir slash ma'am, it is your choice whether or not to wear a face covering, but just as it is our choice to service you in this private business. So comply with our dress code or exit the premises. A few people called the police, or more likely acted as though they were, but at no point did any real authorities bother coming. After my shift ended, I was absolutely exhausted and ready to forget anti-maskers, covid truthers and just eat some banana oatmeal. I hit the supermarket on the way home and the chain still requires masks. As I approached the door, most people were maskless but stopped short of the entrance to put masks on. When seeing the sign, no problem. The people directly next to me though, a mom with a classic Karen haircut and a teenage son approximately 15, didn't. Mom actually did put a tattered, ill-fitting surgical mask on. She wasn't even wearing it correctly, but still better than nothing. Her son, though, didn't break stride, just kept heading into the store. His mom flagged him down and said, Jeremy, put a mask on, it's the policy, kind of quietly as though she was trying not to anger him. He said, I thought we didn't have to do that BS anymore, I saw it in the news. His mom explained that businesses could still require a mask even if the state no longer did. At first I was thinking, props to Karen, her haircut's totally misleading. But her son just couldn't let it end on a nice note. He whined that he didn't bring a mask and he didn't want to walk all the way back to the car to get one. And there wasn't Wi-Fi in the parking lot so no way was he going to wait for her in the car. If he had a mask in the car, why would he have had to wait for her there? Mom tried to think of a rebuttal, eyeing the policy no exception sign, but seemed too tired to generate one, so she just braced herself and they headed into the store. A greeter stopped the son and said he needed a regulation face covering, but he ignored her, grunting, don't have one, and kept walking. The greeter called after him, but couldn't move from her spot by the door, and eventually he was too deep into the aisles to notice. I found all this offensive, however, I was too exhausted from dealing with guys like him professionally to take it on personally. I just went about finding the right color of bananas and trying to get back to my car as quickly as I could. Fast forward to the deli counter, I had taken a ticket and was standing in line. Karen and her son were right nearby. Happily, several people were giving Karen's son the evil eye besides me and keeping a healthy distance from him, but he could not have cared less and neither could his mom. She was placing a long, elaborate deli order and he was picking up lemons in a nearby display and putting them back. 
her son was having a loud FaceTime conversation with a friend, expelling his hair and noisy chatter onto shoppers in every which direction. But I tried to put it out of my mind because I just did not have the bandwidth to deal with people like this one more time tonight. That's when it happened. He coughed, maskless, and directly on the lemons. I was getting ready to say something, but thankfully a deli worker noticed and called him out saying, Who's coughing? Looking all around and noticing the kid. Hey son, you've got to wear a mask to be in here. Karen Jr. shrugged his shoulders, but the deli guy wasn't having it, pulling out the corporate policy sheet. So Karen Jr. looked to his mom for support. She seemed genuinely embarrassed by her son, but not so much that she would hold him accountable for his dangerous choices. She hurriedly explained, Oh, he has a mask, but he left it in the car and we parked in the far lot. Deli counter guy was persistent though, saying, I don't care where he left it, it's the policy, mask up or head out. He took a few assertive steps in the kid's direction, which I guess was too much for Karen to handle, because she threw herself in between her son and the worker. There was still easily 10 plus feet of space between them, he was hardly chesting up to the kid, as Karen triumphantly declared, The store isn't allowed to have that policy anymore. Didn't you see Governor Abbott's announcement? It was never even a law anyways. That stymied the deli guy. My guess is because he had seen the announcement and he wasn't sure what to make of it, didn't want to risk his job if he really couldn't enforce a mask policy anymore, and had a line piling up at his station so he couldn't argue with her all day. So he stepped back, but not before saying, Well, either way, you shouldn't need a law. It's a paragon of selfishness what you're doing. Son, my mother is dead of this disease, dead in the ground. Never got to meet her granddaughter. She wasn't too much older than your mother. You should think about that. The kid, unblinking, laughed at this guy. Not chuckled, full-blown belly laugh cackling. His mother pulled him away saying he was being rude, but didn't make him apologize, let alone apologize herself. I placed my order, told the guy how despicable that exchange was and apologized for his loss, and that was that. Or so I'd hoped. I prayed I'd be able to avoid them for the rest of my trip, but lo and behold, just as I was about to check out, I realized I was out of plastic wrap. I always have leftovers so I needed to go for the wrap, didn't matter how close to check out I was. I doubled back, holding my breath, no pun intended, and sure enough, the mother-son super spreaders were stationed at the end cap, having an argument with a clerk. As best I could figure it from the bits and pieces I picked up, customers were complaining about his coughing enough to motivate a manager to confront the family. The manager was physically intimidating, so I guessed he was staff's go-to guy for confrontations, but it became immediately apparent he did not have a personality for conflict. His name was Chet, name tag, and he was a human teddy bear at like 6 foot 5 and 300 pounds. He had, to his credit, managed to get Karen's cart away from her, holding it to the side so they could not continue shopping until her son put his mask on. But now Chet was pleading with Karen, Please don't yell at me, I can't understand you when you're yelling. Karen was going off on Chet about the laws he'd broken, the discrimination he was enacting against her poor son, how the entire store had been harassing a minor child since they entered, and how the news in the corporate office would hear about this and he'd be out of a job and no one is hiring right now so he better be careful. Chet seemed genuinely surprised as he tried and failed to communicate to Karen gentle reassurances of, I am trying to help you actually. Ma'am, I don't want to harass anyone, I want this to work out. The situation at hand though, is that you cannot continue to shop until your son conforms to our corporate masking policy for the well-being of the communities we serve, alright? Help me help you. Meanwhile, as Cameron was preaching, well, screeching, the innocence of Karen Jr., her son was actively berating her, telling her she was embarrassing and ineffective and she was so stupid for wasting time arguing with these people and he just wanted to ignore them and keep shopping. He was a toothpick and Chet was a redwood, so I don't know in what universe he thought he'd ignore the situation and continue about his business, but oh well. 
Anyways, at this stage, I realized it was disrespectful to just be a voyeur to the spectacle. I would either have to speak up or move on with my shopping. Maybe this was the straw that broke my back after the day I'd had at work. Maybe I was just on autopilot, or maybe I felt sympathy for Chet. Probably a mix of all three, but my mask-enforcing persona roared to life. Luckily, I was also still wearing my work clothes, including name tag, or this might not have worked. I stormed over with my most authoritative manager of the manager swagger and said, Excuse me, excuse me, you're creating a disturbance. Do we have a problem here? Poor Chet started trying to explain and remove me from the situation, thinking I was a concerned customer who was upset by the disruption of their altercation, or worse, a third member of the Karen party. But I just fell into my script which I had down cold at this point reciting, Sir, ma'am, you have a choice as to whether or not you'd like to wear a mask. And as a private business, we have a choice as to the dress code we'd like to set for our customers. You have two options as to how we can proceed from here. Karen just kept talking over me while her son witched at her to stop engaging with us and keep shopping. Including this gem of a line, They're literally lower than rent cups They're the can stacking people. Just ignore them. So I went into the phase two script. All right, you have made the choice not to partake in our services and we have, in turn, made the choice not to serve you. Please leave now or you will be escorted out. If you leave of your own volition, you'll be welcomed back if dressed appropriately. If escorted out, a permanent ban will be issued. Please note, we have a clear view of your face on our CCTV to reference, as you are not currently wearing a mask. That nearly made Cameron Jr.'s head explode. He started shouting obscenities at us and I just flatly stated, my colleague is contacting security. Getting edgier as he escalated because A, I made the assumption the store had security but it was dawning on me that I had no clue whether or not they did and B, Karen Jr. was physically larger than me so I thought back to the stories of store workers being attacked, even killed by anti-maskers for enforcing these policies. For a minute I wondered if I should have kept my nose out of this business. But Karen stepped up to the plate, better late than never. She started pulling her son towards the door, insisting, I cannot be banned from here. This store is easily closest to the house. Come on, come on. He resisted at first, even intentionally pushing over the end cap display in a rage, to which Chet offered the strong words of, Hey now, was that really necessary? When he started destroying property, Karen left him to face security on his own and made a beeline for her car. After about 15 seconds more of kicking stuff around, Karen Jr. realized he was left standing on his own two feet without mommy there to shield him from real world consequences and absolutely broke down. A wave of terror washed over him and just as quickly as he'd flown into the initial rage, he bolted for the exit. Chet was so casual about all of this. He turned to me and asked, You don't work here, do you? I've never seen you before and... I explained what I'd been dealing with at work and how I felt obligated to step in as a result, and he sincerely thanked me. Even offered me coupons, but chillingly said that while he appreciated the thought behind it, next time I should not get involved. He warned that some of the anti-maskers had been wholly unstable, hitting or spitting at employees, and they did have a usual security guard, but he was out that day because of an injury an anti-masker inflicted on him at another job site. It's only because he was out that day that they sent any regular store workers to confront the kid at all. He sighed and said, This is mostly what I've been doing today. I don't know if it's because I've got a calm demeanor or because I look like I don't have a calm demeanor, but either way, I'm always the one they send to deal with the crazies. I was so distracted by all this, I didn't even end up remembering to get my plastic wrap. I just checked out and headed home as quickly as I could. So stay safe out there everyone. Wear your masks, keep your distance, get the vaccine, watch out for one another. We'll be through to the other side of this soon. Not as soon as we could be, thanks to people like Karen and Son, but soon. So if you saw all this going down with a store employee, would you feel obligated to jump in and try and do something, or would you stay from a distance and let it play out as it plays out? Let me know in the comments down below. And our final story of the day is by Sunshard66. I don't work here, I'm a passenger as well. In 2016, I went on a cruise with three friends. We were all 20, which made us stick out. The cruise line we chose is designed for older people and families, so being very young and not having parents with us was very noticeable. 
So anyway, every night there's this thing called Movies Under the Stars where you go to the top deck and there's a movie playing outside. On this deck was also a burger stand, a pizza stand, and a bar, which was pretty cool. So my friends and I go up for the movie, they decide to get us some good deck chairs, I go over to the burger stand to get us all some food. I bring the food to my friends, put my food on the deck chair, and then start walking to the bar for a drink. I walk maybe 5 meters, and this little old Asian woman sitting on her own at a table grabs my arm as I walk past. The woman in a very heavy accent says, I would like a coke. I say, excuse me? She says, can you get me a coke? I say, um, she says, thank you, sweetheart. I kind of turn to my friends who are witnesses to all this really confused. I start walking to the bar again. As I'm walking down, I flag down a server. This deck always had like six servers walking around to get you a drink if you wanted one. I point the woman out and say she'd like a Coke. The server goes to tend to her. I get my drink and then go sit down. In hindsight, bringing food to my friends and being quite young confused this little old lady to think I was a server. She wasn't rude or mean, and just makes for a cute funny story. I think it's cute and funny except for the fact that they did just grab you randomly. I don't know if it's something that's a holdover from decades past, but I don't think there's any situation where you should be physically grabbing the servers. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today, so if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which story and why in the comments down below. But besides that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like, and if you haven't, subscribe and turn notifications on so you'll never miss an upcoming video. No matter what you do, whether it's just viewing the video, liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, I appreciate the heck out of it. Every little thing that you do helps the channel grow that much more and I can't thank you enough for it. So, until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll be right here next time on the Storytime Channel.